Hello, a very good evening to you, Sunday evening. Sorry, we had a little technical difficulty there, well beyond my control. A very, very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty Blue, and I'm, of course, live on Facebook Live. The world's top broadcasting platform, and it's Scotty McClure, one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment, caused by you, the good burgers of the world, the people of the globe, nation upon nation. Lovely, lovely to have you with me, of course. I hope you enjoyed the promo this morning, Julianne Scott, Dinky Doo, Dinky Doo, hello, Scotty, Michael Paul McVeigh watching, and uh, Wadge is there, Dinky Doo, Wadge, George Mullen and Wadge wondering why they hadn't got me, Catherine Scally's watching, marvellous, Dinky Doo, Ian Walker, Ian Mr. McClure, did you remember to put 50p in the lecky meter, Scotty, says Alan Stitt, yes, Alan, it was something way beyond my control, but we're here now. Good evening, says John Douglas. George Wands is watching. Thank you for waiting for me, guys. Ahoy hoy, says David Gardner. Lovely to have you all here. Douglas William Bryce watching. Nicola McLaughlin. Hi, Scotty. William Black's watching. Now, I'm not going to spend the whole show reading out all your messages unless they are absolutely out standing i can see them good evening sir says dan mcwilliams finally you're here says wedge yes wedge a wee technical difficulty but of course mcclure kept cool under fire and sorted it all out martin john kirkland grundy chalmers is there hello martin john kirkland grundy chalmers good evening sir says michael paul mcveigh and the vag shvitek hello from gavin and i don't think that's gavin or govan hi scotty how are you the night says Margaret Bonner. I'm fabulous, folks. Now, we've a lot to discuss tonight, several, several subjects to get through, and so little time to do it in. I hope you all saw the promo and that you've been doing your bit and sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. About 900 of you saw the promo this morning, so that's marvellous. Thank you very much for that. Good evening, Scotty. I hope you're keeping well, says Daniel Joseph. I am indeed, Daniel, and delighted to be with you all tonight. Now, global broadcasting, we're talking about it. Is your television and radio suiting you? Give me your comments and let me know what you think. That's what we're talking about tonight because, as you know, over the last 24 weeks, Scotty McClure has held one of the biggest broadcasting experiments probably since Marconi discovered radio waves. And, uh, Scotty, I hope this got... Not going to be any spanners short of a picnic tonight, says Melissa McAleer. Thank you to those who were um, on from Australia this morning. I find that I didn't get to all of you. Did you see the fire in Govan, Scotty? Yes, I did. And I saw it on social media. This is where social media is miles ahead of the established terrestrial media. Scotty, I was at the Tory conference protest. And how the Tories all look alike. It was like the village of the damned, says Ian Walker. Summer, Thixton, love the show, love you, Scotty. I'm listening in Florida in the USA. Isn't that fabulous? Sandwich shot of a toolbox, Melissa, LMAO, says Nicola McLaughlin. And, of course, the BBC is a government propaganda machine, Scotty, says Gary Cross. And, well, we will see. The BBC is due to launch a new channel. 30 million pounds worth of programming but remember the bbc takes 325 million pounds out of scotland hi scotty you're probably apart from the national scotland's most trusted media yes apart from that fire at ibrox when the smoke turns white the rangers will have a new manager <laughs> brady scott patrick there happy sunday night scotty says ron stewart hello from lewis and Colin in Kirkintilloch, Jerry Carty, is watching. So, we're talking about terrestrial media. Are you happy with your television and radio? I suspect there are difficulties. Have you noticed the ITV, the top commercial channel in this country, is changing its evening programming? At 10 o'clock sharp, they've got a show called The Nightly Show. Now, it's been panned by the critics. I tend not to uh, get stuck in until something has properly established itself. 
So that's my feeling there. Good to hear and see you, Scotty, from Loch Lomond. If you're sending in John Paul Preston's watching, dinky do to you, John Paul, and Jim Clark's watching. Good evening, Scotty, says Jim. I say good evening, Jim. Radio is great. TV is a wee bit pants, says Alex Duff. Well, there you go. Yes, I'm happy with radio. TV no good, says Wadge. So, do you think that the Scotty McClure show should go out at 10 o'clock sharp on our terrestrial television channels? Would that entertain you? Marconi never discovered radio waves, says Edward James. I know that, Edward, but he discovered their existence. So there you go. It's a bit like saying James Watt invented steam. TV's rubbish. I have cable. It's all rubbish. I don't have a radio as my phone, uh, uh, as on my phone, as my dad pushed my earphones, says Angie Thompson. Get some more earphones, my dear. Greetings from Easter House, Scotty, says Mark Ferry. Dinky do to every day in the Easter house, I say. Marvellous stuff. So uh, it seems like a lot of you are not happy with television, so give me your comments. Keep them coming there, Scotty. There's a number doing the rounds that the Tories are going to try and end Scottish devolution and end Holyrood. Well, they would struggle about that because you would then go back to the actual original Act of Union and um, you would work out that Scotland should be on an equal footing to England. That was part of the Treaty of Union. The Scotty McClure Show gets my vote, says Francis King. Absolutely. Sean Finlay's watching. I think that Netflix provides a better service than the BBC. Also, coverage of Scottish sport is awful on television. You would be my top TV man. You're funny. No, I'll tell you my secret. I'm going to let you into a wee secret tonight. I've got lots and lots of secrets which I either shall or shan't tell you. But one of my great secrets to success in broadcasting, and I've done about 40 years of broadcasting. I had my first radio station when I was nine years old. You could broadcast from the house. You could hear it in the garage. Uh, so there we are. Nice one, says Ian Walker. So one of my secrets is I'm talking to you, the people. And the problem with television companies, they've appointed people over the years who have run a mile from the public. Never, ever, ever run a mile from the public. Know your audience and uh, give them what they want, whether it's in sound or vision. And they will reward you with their viewership and their listenership. So there you go. John Toms agrees. He says, indeed. And I think if we have a program on terrestrial television fronted by my good self, I am, after all, the world's top broadcaster. That's never in dispute. And um, if I fronted the program and we talked together every night, I think we could get everyone tuning in. Because I don't know if you remember when I did um, phone-ins. I've done national phone-ins. I did phone-ins across Scotland. And we had huge, huge, huge audiences and i think we can get these audiences back everyone deposit five pound in the go fund me for scotty mcclue let's do this says john toms yes i'm hoping to purchase media assets and i know exactly what i'm looking for you'll just have to trust me in this but i need every single one of you to stick a fiver into gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue go and do it now please and let's get this fund moving and then we can look at a brand new independent media with no agenda scotty mcclue does not have an agenda i am purely a broadcaster so there you are Will you be on the radio soon or TV, Scotty, says Edward James? Uh, yes, there's a lot going on there. There are high-level meetings going on all the time with me. And if I told you some of the people in these meetings, you would just crumple in amazement. Uh, so we're talking away about things and seeing if we can get the media moving. But I favour an independent free media funded by the people now you know fine that scotty McClure has always accepted applause or derision on merit so if you don't think i'm worth it you don't have to give me a bean but think about it. i have provided 
25 years this year of top, top, talk on television and radio. I've done 36,000 hours of unscripted broadcasting. And uh, you see, it's unscripted. I don't have an auto cue or anything like that. This is live television with me flying by the seat of my pants. Now, if you think that's worth a fiver, please go and stick one in GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Paste to your browser. There we are. Thank you, John Toms. Very much appreciated. I'll give you a wee thumbs up for that. He is an amazing man. John Toms, one of our top Scottish businessmen. Very, very big in social media. If you ever get the chance to meet John Toms, do that. Martin Monaghan's watching. I say good evening to you, Martin. Lovely to have you with us. The BBC might beam you up, Scotty. If you're on TV, lol, says Shug McDougall. Absolutely. You should do that. Come on, people. Go fund me for this man. It's all about the people. All you have to do, guys, is stick into your browser, gofundme.com. www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Remember, Scotty spelt with an I-E. S-C-O-T-T-I-E hyphen M-C-C-L-U-E. And if we do that right now, it would make a huge difference. Wedge! Sends thumbs up. I send thumbs up to you. John Toms has just posted and says, paste it into your browser. Let's get our Scottish media on the move. And we'll make it worldwide. So there we are. And uh, Barry Wayne, shall we take it? Something about uh, Lord Ho Ho presenter's job on Scotty McRadio. No, no, don't liken me to Lord Ho Ho. They hanged him, poor thing. Uh, and... Uh, uh, you know, that was the end of that. William Joyce, who was an Irishman, actually, if I remember rightly. Uh, and he broadcast from Radio Luxembourg Studios during the war. And a friend told me that they flung out all the old acetates of Lord Ho Ho. How, how dare they? Because, I mean, these would have been valuable, these broadcasts. People were supposed to be banned from listening in this country, but they weren't. They, they, they listened. Evening, says Fraser Macmillan. Very good evening to you, Fraser. If you've just joined us, folks, a very warm welcome to the programme. You're watching Scotty McClure broadcasting live and globally around the world. If you're in America, Australia, Russia, China, Japan, the Arctic, the Antarctic, then get watching and get sharing now. We've just come up to a share point. We're a little bit late in starting because we had a technical problem tonight. A tiny technical problem way beyond my control, but I kept my cool. And I said, the show will go on. We will get talking to the nation. Mainstream radio has got too many regulations on what you can and can't say nowadays, says Phil Jones Hammersley. All the brilliant presenters, such as your good self, were always ahead of the game. Then the regulators stuck the boot in. See more. Oh, see more is so difficult because it's tiny. And I've got such quite big fingers, piano fingers. Uh, all the brilliant presenters, such a good self, were always ahead of the game. Then the regulators stuck the boot in. Also, we got rid of our TV years ago. It wasn't worth paying the license fee for the five programs a year we used to watch. It's funny, when we get a visit from the detector man, he can't find the telly in our house. Quite right, too. A lot of people are saying that also the BBC is outdated and that, uh, you know, there should be another way of funding it. I mean, if you look at companies like Sky Television, they are by subscription. And uh, Scotty McClure, of course, is absolutely free. But I would love you to go to GoFundMe tonight and stick in five quid. If everybody does that, we can get started. You'll see it there. Ian Russell's watching. Giuseppe Boschetti and six others have just shared. We've had a share point. Share, 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 share. Let's keep discussing this, guys. I want to bring you around to the discussion because a lot of very, very highly intelligent people watching this program right now and treat this as one big board meeting where we all decide what we want for our information, education, and entertainment now and at a determinable time in the future. So there we go. Um, what have we got here? This is incredible, folks. John Toms has said, good point, Phil. He's a or God point, Phil. He's introduced God to it for some reason. I suspect it's a typo, actually, to be quite honest with you. I suspect there's a wee typo there. Now, I seem to have a problem there. Um, I'm fading a little bit. I hope that the lights are not damaging 
the camera I will move them aside a little bit is it too dark if I do that guys does that make me too dark because I don't want to burn the camera with too much light if it's far too dark then we'll pop some on but I can just see a slight bit and I'm sure I remember from my early television days the um, technicians telling me that too much light can uh, can damage your camera lens what did you think of Theresa May this week talking her nonsense says John Paul Preston I have to say I'm very very unimpressed with Theresa May uh, really I mean she is unelected of course um, and she's just somebody that's kind of wandered into that post she happened to be hanging around when the post became vacant after the Brexit thing and I was reading I need to get it for you but I was reading about Brexit and um, the government of course did not want brexit it's very interesting if you go back to government publications that have come in they did not want brexit very very interesting uh, so uh, I'm, I'm afraid i haven't got a great deal of time for Theresa May because also she uh, doesn't appear to understand the scottish issue and the scottish issue is very very important if you go back to the treaty of union scotland should have equal rights and anything that was introduced after the treaty of union after 1707 should have equal rights as well very very important there guys uh, so so that means that an organization like the bbc started in 1922 to try and get a handle and get some kind of control over the airwaves should have equal rights scotland should have equal rights and I have a situation where it was found that the BBC were acting illegally a few years ago because they hadn't apportioned equal rights to Scotland. So uh, we need to look into all that. Um, who's at the other end of your unscripted success, Scotty? Says Edward James. Edward, you are, along with the rest of the population of the world. So there you go. Seven billion of you, members of the human race. We also take outsiders to the human race. Not a problem. We will do that as well. Uh, so all your animals and what have you. What's the chat tonight, Scotty? Your topics, says John Toms. Well, John, what we're actually doing tonight, we're talking about broadcasting. And we're talking about world broadcasting. Because I think Facebook Live, Scotty McClue on Facebook Live, I know our equipment is very, very, very basic. But um, what I will do is take something out of the GoFundMe account when you guys get your money in there and we'll improve the basic equipment for the program as well. But I would say that Facebook Live is the way ahead for terrestrial television. You see, it's all to do with content. And what happens is they get minor celebrities, attractive young ladies with short skirts and things like that and say let's put them on the telly they're a celebrity everyone will watch no 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 wrong 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 and they cannot believe that uh, a middle-aged gentleman in his tweed cap can command massive 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 audiences why because we're talking to the people and i used to say this to radio controllers when they did two-headed breakfast shows and they followed each other because it was fashionable to do a two-headed breakfast show and i would say to them don't do that don't do a two-headed breakfast show because what you're doing is you're shutting out the audience if you look at the late terry wogan probably our most successful broadcaster ever apart from scotty McClue. and so what did terry do he talked to you and i every morning on the radio and we felt we were the people he was talking to we knew he was talking to millions upon millions upon millions but we felt he was talking to us so there you are so i would cite the late sir terry wogan as perhaps our greatest broadcaster apart from my good self so that's what we're talking about scotty we should get rid of programs like the x factor and get proper creative comedy and drama yes have you watched programs now don't no disrespect to uh, those who have got illnesses and diseases and what have you but have you noticed that it's so depressing you can end up depressed the adverts can be depressing a lot of them are for funerals and undertakers and things like that and you can end up watching the television and if you're not careful you'll have tears streaming down your cheeks and they're not tears of laughter 
So I think we need to look at serious comedy. What have we got for comedy? That's what we're talking about. Good shout, Alan. James Forbes. Yes, James Dinky, do to you. You've shared it. Thanks very much. Time for another share point coming up, guys. If you want to share, 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 share. And type a message on your Facebook. Say, are you watching Scotty McClue live? Very, very important. Now, if you've ever missed a Scotty McClue program, this is our 24th program. If you've ever missed one, you'll find they've been uploaded to YouTube. So you can get onto my YouTube, Scotty McClue YouTube channel, and there you will find the programs uploaded. Last night, I did my first broadcast on Twitter on Periscope. And what was interesting about Periscope, it took me the first minute to find out how it worked because my camera was pointing the wrong way. So the first minute is darkness with me huffing and puffing. And then suddenly I appear. It's quite funny. It's quite good comedy, actually, if you want to watch it. And that's my very first Twitter account. So it took me a minute to work out how it all worked. And then up I popped. Dinky do. Um, is Ian Lee right to be going on strike? Radio is bland now, says David Gardner. I like, yes, Ian Lee on the new talk radio on digital. And uh, he's doing his best, is Ian, a very fine broadcaster. And uh, he's doing his best. So, uh, you know, I uh, hope everything works out for uh, for the new talk radio on digital audio broadcasting. Look out for it, I say. Hi, Scotty. Still many are playing the GTA. Tremendous. And um, James says, sorry, I'll just get this going up. They should put adverts on the BBC. They should just put adverts on the BBC. I don't know, James, if you mean the BBC should be all adverts. Very, very interesting that. They should just put adverts on the BBC. I'm trying to work out what's doing this um, camera. In. So there we are. Is that better, guys? Are you seeing me a little bit one-eyed? A little bit watery. It looks a bit strange here. Agree, it's reality shows about people that want to be superstars for singing. It's not the X Factor, it's The Voice or Britain's Got Talent. It's a load of rubbish. I just watch the History Channel now. The lovely thing is, I remember having a client who said to me, when I say a client, people who were purchasing advertising from me, and saying, do you know, Scotty, we learned more from you than we did at the school, especially history. So there you are. So if you want to know anything about history, Scotty McClue is your man. But I'm here for all of you with all your queries and stuff. And remember, when I uh, started doing live broadcasting, there was no uh, Google, no search engines, no Internet. So there we are. Uh, excellent stuff. Andrew Thompson says, I agree. It's all reality shows about people that want to be uh, singing stars. So there you are. We've just, I've just read you that. Paste this, says John Toms. It's the GoFundMe. If you're wanting the GoFundMe URL, the GoFundMe link, John Toms, you will see in front of you there. I hadn't quite twigged that you could all see the messages, but one of my friends said, Scotty, why do you read all the messages out? Because we can actually see them live on Facebook as you're talking. So there you go. Um, I don't know why we pay a TV license. It's all repeats. When did history start, Scotty? What year? Well, I'll be honest with you. I mean, obviously, history started right at the beginning of the world. So if you know your bits and pieces, you can go back about four and a half billion years. In fact, last week, we made a wonderful historical discovery, or the scientists did. They found one of the very early creatures made up of cells. I thought that was fantastic. I thought that was tremendous. So there we go. We found that. Yes, if I lean over that way, is that better, guys? Yes, there we go. Does that look better? Fantastic. So, uh, yes, they found uh, one of the early creatures made up of cells uh, just last week. But history, we've actually lost about... 75 or 80 percent of our history because um a lot of it was destroyed so there you are and a lot of it uh, didn't make it uh john Tom's very kindly www.gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue if everyone 
can go and stick a fiver in. Ask yourself, can I spare a fiver for Scotty McClure? Answer yes. And if you really, really, really are strapped and you can't spare a fiver, do me a favour, go to GoFundMe anyway and click the Facebook and the Twitter links. That's what I'd like you to do so that you're sharing the GoFundMe page so that people can see it and it gives them a chance to contribute because I'm after buying some media assets and you'll just have to trust me with 40 years experience that I know exactly what I'm doing. I've saved a number of radio stations, I've saved television stations, so uh, you know I should know what I'm doing by now. Scotty McClue operates on many, many levels. Remember, I operate behind the scenes of the British media as well. Remember, I advise people, very, very senior people, on uh, their uh, media work. So, uh, you know, if you uh, if you want Scotty McClure's advice, feel free to get in touch with me. If you own radio stations and television stations and newspapers, feel free to get in touch with Scotty McClure. I worked for one of the top groups and they had something that was going uh, not too well, shall we say. And nobody ever even came near and asked me anything. They'd appointed all these senior people who didn't have experience. And uh, that's why it wasn't going so well, I think. Um, wonderful stuff. So, GoFundMe.com, Scotty hyphen McClue. I, I need new valves for my telly, Captain, says George Raffin. Do you know, do you remember the radio shops you used to go in and buy the valves that were made by Moulard? And you uh, gave the chap, he usually wore something like a little brown coat behind the counter. A bit like the two Ronnie's sketch with the four candles. And um, you, went in, you went into the radio and TV shop and you said, excuse me, I've got a 1947 Bush and um, one, of my, uh, one of my valves has gone in. it. said, do you have the valve with you? Ah, yes, indeed. That's the 1047. I'll just get you that. And uh, he would bring it down for you and say, if you want to bring the set in, I'll fit it for you. Just be careful. Make sure your, sweat, your set is switched off. <laughs> Fergus McLennan, were you a fan of Scotty McClue? Says Mark Ferry. Everyone is a fan of Scotty McClue. You might like Scotty McClue. You might hate Scotty McClue. This is me. But you do love him. So there you are. You've got to admit that. Scotty, use that tie of yours and wipe the camera. It's not the camera, my dear, I don't think. Uh, the, I think it's the lighting that's done it. Because if I move that way, you'll see a big difference. So there we go. What if I do that? Does that help? Hmm. Very interesting. Yes. I think there's a bit of camera burn there. Actually, we'll need to be careful about that. I wonder which one's doing it. Hold on a second. Now, I know... They seem to be. See if that will recover. Yes. This is why we need to go fund me. Aha! Is that better? The, yes, it is. Can you see it improving all the time? So that was the offending article, I think. We'll put that off now. How about that? Is that better? So there we are. I think the lights are so bright that, uh, that they're probably causing a bit of anxiety for the camera. If we've got any technical people watching, do let me know what you think. Joanne Menzies. Good evening, Scotty. Fergus McClelland uh, is uh, watching. Scotty, I listened to Radio BBC4 just to get some sleep. The comedy shows are terrible. The shipping forecast is the best thing on it. Yes, I used to love the shipping for Dogger Strong. <laughs> That's okay, says John Thompson. Thank you very much, John. Very much appreciate. Your left side's gone a bit misty, says Angie Thompson. Yes, it has, Angie. Let me see what else we can do. See if we can stop the left side going a bit misty. We're going to have to do something. Is that any better? Are we still misty? There we are. Play misty for me, will you? And uh, misty up to your right. Yes, yes, yes. I think we've we've got a wee technical problem tonight, guys. And it's to do with the lighting being too strong. I'm just wondering if the light behind me hasn't helped. Hold on a wee second. I have a lamp here, you see. If I put that out... We'll see if that, what we do is try and an error until we get an improvement. But if I move over that way, it's definitely better. So it's that side. Which light is that? Can you see that there, guys? There. Which light's doing that? That one. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Scary stuff. Right, we'll see if that helps. I think that's what was doing it. That's what I reckon. Anyway, my dad had a fancy TV, and we watched one channel all day. 
bump the logo into the side of the TV. Yes, it can do it. Can do. I remember the technicians when I worked in television. Can you give your webcam a wee wipe, Scotty McClure, says James Forbes. It's not as easy as that, James. That's not actually what's causing it. There's me giving the webcam a wee wipe, but you'll still see that that's nothing to do with it. And uh, Mary Carty's watching, Andy Taylor's watching, Ian Walker. The area around your right eye is a tad blurred. Let me see if we can move over a bit. How about that, guys? The only trouble is you're not seeing... Yes. How's that? Is that any better? No, I think that's worse, actually. Let's try this way. Ah! How's about that? That's a little bit better. Right, we'll see how we get on. Uh, Theresa May, uh, uh, yes, she's mad as John Paul Preston is. Will the Scottish people ever trust mainstream media again, says Alan Cadd? No, Alan, I don't think they will because of the behaviour of the BBC during the Indiref campaign. They'd obviously got very, very strict orders along with the unionist media to ensure that Indiref failed. So the media worked as hard as they could. All sorts of headlines, anything at all to belittle our wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Scottish Parliament and Scottish leadership, which should have got equal coverage. So I think for Indiref 2, which will come, the media should butt out. That's what I think. I think they should have to butt out. Need to dash, Scotty. You have a great show. Loads of my mates on here. Good night, all, and deposit five pounds right here at HTTPS. <laughs> Fantastic. And then um, your uh, colon forward slash forward slash www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Well done to all the people who turned up to the Tories on Friday and Saturday. And thank you to all who donated to the homeless. Wendy McDonald Thompson, I think you mean to, you mean to turn up uh, for the March, Wendy. Yes, absolutely. Whatever happened to we fat bobs, says Nivag Svitek. I don't know, Nivag. I really honestly don't know. Scotty McClure for president, says Barry Wayne. Now, that's the next part of our discussion, guys. But could we have a sharing of this video by everyone. Share, 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 share. And I will try and get this camera set up, sorted out for you. Um, Fiona Reardon, why get rid of the royals? Why get rid of the royals? I don't know if she means why get rid of the royals. Fiona Reardon, can I say to you, never, ever, ever touch the royals. But don't go anywhere near that at all. The Crown and Parliament, right, have absolutely no connection when it comes to the Union of the Crowns and the Union of the Parliaments. The Union of the Crowns was 1603. The Crown is a Scottish institution primarily. It was James VI of Scotland who took over and became James I of England. So leave the Crown out of things. Don't go for a republic or anything like that. That will cause massive, massive upset and it's a sideshow to independence so just leave it alone the royals are not parasites they are not anything except a fabulous family who cost us 60 pence a year i think uh, it's even 52 pence a year you can get it down to they bring in billions to the british economy so never ever ever not the royals or don't want the royals or accuse them of you know uh, staying in a big house when people are homeless. There's no connection with that. These are totally different budgets. If you got rid of the royal family, I assure you the poor would be with us next week. The money would just disappear, right? So the royal family are titular. They are the heads of state. It's the state that, uh, that has the money and the state is our asset base. Nothing to do with Scottish independence. If you're Scottish independence, keep the pound, keep the queen. That's uh, the first thing I would say, and you'll be fine. If you start to divert attention away from Westminster and take it towards the royal family, independence will fail. I can tell you that right now. And we don't want that. Because Scotland, economically, can survive very, very well on its own. Even if there was... A 14 billion pound black hole, which there isn't in the economy, that is a unionist myth, then that could be covered by us hanging on to the levy of 40 billion 
pounds. That would still leave us £26 billion up on our first year of not uh, paying Westminster. All right? Advertising was invented, invented by Sigmund Freud's nephew. It's a form of commercial brainwashing, says John Paul Preston. Scotty, why don't you go YouTube live, says Lisa Preston, because it's quite complex. You need to download Codex, and I do have the facility, but uh, it certainly um, isn't operating on the level that we're operating on right here. I mean, last week's show uh, has already had five and a half thousand of an audience, you know, 125,000 people have seen our Facebook live video. So, you know, at, at the moment we're small beer, but there's absolutely no reason why Scotty McClure could not command an audience of billions. And that's up to you guys. McClure, you could not lace Wogan's boots. Get a grip, says Gordon Stilling. Gordon Stilling, stop being silly and listen to what I'm saying. I'm saying that Terry Wogan, in my opinion, was the finest broadcaster out with Scotty McClure. So there you go. That's what I'm telling you. And if you'd put me on at breakfast on Radio 2, uh, you know, after Terry retired, I'm sure we would have had a great success there as well. So there you go, because he's a man I'd listened to for a long time. Can you all stop, please, telling me to wipe the camera? It's nothing to do with that. It's um, a lighting burn on the lens. Uh, Scotty, your right-hand side of your screen, give it a rub. No, Paul. See, there you go. There, so the camera's fine. You see me clearing up. I'm a bit out of vision. But it clears up. It's this light has been burning the camera. You see, it's been reflected off one of the pictures there. I don't know why we pay the TV license. The telly's all repeats. Good to hear Brucey's made a good recovery. Yes, 89, Sir Bruce Forsyth. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, Gordon Sterling, stop cheeking up. That's what I would say to you. That's my advice to you. Wipe your face, said Edward James. Oh, it's not better. No. And um, so we've got all that going on here. James Forbes. Scotty, wipe your camera. James, would you listen to me? It's nothing to do with the camera. It is a burn on the lens. All right. There, if you see I move to the side, it all goes clear. Um, Adam McClue met Miss Eve, and the rest is history, says Barry Wayne. Still blurry on the left-hand side, says Angie. I know, Angie, I know about it. If I go lower, I'm less blurry. Can you see that? I wonder if I could... I wonder if I turn the camera around. Is that better? Let's see what's going on here. See if we get to the bottom. Ah, that's what's bloody. Right. Now, if I do that, and if I do that, is that better, folks? Yes, do you see something of an improvement? Humans have been around over two million years. I think they've been around even longer than that, John Paul Preston. Um, you know, the rocks in our local park are 325 million years old. So I can tell you that. And uh, it's condensation in your camera. No, it's not condensation in the camera. I have to tell you that. They haven't found the link between the ape men and the Homo sapiens. Was Darwin just guessing? says Ian Walker. Very, very interesting, Ian. Was Darwin guessing, I ask you? Is that any improvement, guys? Is that helping? We will get all these. These are minor technical things, so please don't worry about that. You should read up on the Telesson. Really interesting, says Julianne Scott. Absolutely. Scotty, your lens is steaming up. It's not steaming up. There you go. Just giving it a wipe. See? Nothing to do with the lens at all. All right. Have we got that? Um, right, we'll see if we can get this sorted out for you folks. Is that slightly better? Are you noticing it's slightly better? Yes. And uh, Scotty, you use the tie of yours to wipe the camera. Michael, it's because he's hot stuff, says Esther Hart. Esther Hart, you say the loveliest things. You're a very, very sweet lady. Um, my father used to fix old tellies. He had boxes of valves. Uh, never see any now, Captain. No, I, I suppose... You would have to go on the internet, you know, and go on maybe eBay or something like that. And you may, you may still get television valves. I'm going to see if I can do it by process of elimination, guys. So we might go a little bit dark. What happens if I put these lights out? Right? Nothing. What happens if I put that light out? Anything? Oh, we're sitting in the dark now, for goodness sake. 
Yes. Now that's not so good either, is it? Um, right. We'll see what we can do. We will get it sorted out for you, folks. I promise you, because that's what McClue does. He's a solutionist. He sorts out problems. Uh, I think there should be regional branches of the megaphone in. Uh, like we had regional ITV. Do you remember? ITV, there were 15 companies. And we used to meet up on the conference call, the red phone it was called. And it went beep, 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 beep. And we would run down and say, this is Thames calling Granada, calling Grampian, calling Border, calling Scottish, calling Ulster, calling Tyne Tees, calling Anglia, calling TSW, calling Channel, yeah, all that, calling HTV wheels. Marvellous stuff. I think your camera's on the blink, says Melissa. You're quite right, Melissa. It, that's exactly what it is. Uh, it's a wee bit better, Scotty, says John Paul Preston. Well, we'll struggle on tonight, and what we will do, we will sort it out. Now, is it time for a share, I ask you? 2240, uh, I've got 2248 here. So we've got 15 minutes, because we're a little bit late in starting. And uh, I always like to give you your money's worth. Um, it's a wee bit better, Scotty. Yes, um, I think you're quite right, Melissa. I do think there is a camera problem. It's worse, Scotty. It's like having an eye test. Yes, I used to go out with an optician, actually, a lady optician. And she used to say to me, Scotty, is it better like this or is it better like that? Uh, there's a smudge on your end. No, there's not a smudge, Alan. It's just, uh, it looks like that. It looks like it's steamed up. It's a camera burn. Did you know there's around five VHS videos of an audience with Scotty McClure going on eBay? How about releasing it on DVD if you have the rights to it, says Phil Jones Hammerley. I do have the rights to it. I've got uh, a good whack of the rights, and there's also they're, they're shared with another party. There's a warm front coming in from the kitchen, says Ian Walker. Absolutely, yes, that's right. We're boiling the, boiling the kettle. And uh, still the same, says Steve. I know the postman always rings twice, says Edward James. What a film. No, it's still there, says Esther Hart. Yes, I know, Esther, I know. Let me see what I can do about it, if anything. Nope, then that just seems up that side. It's definitely a lighting problem, I can tell you that right now. There you are. You're talking to the experts. It's a lighting problem and it's done in the camera. That's better, says Lisa. Is it better, Lisa? Has that actually helped? Helped a little bit. Uh, see you in Argus the Mora, says Angie. We need to fund Scotty McClue for a new webcam. Yes, have you all gone and stuck a fiver in gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue? Do, if you wouldn't mind. See, is Scotty McClue worth a fiver? 25 years, 36 hours of... 36,000 hours of unscripted broadcasting. Yes. I'm watching Scotty, says Fiona Reardon. Absolutely. Better, better, says Steve Burrows. Yes, definitely a little bit better. And uh, Ian Walker, he says, the photos behind you are getting blood. This is a roll dowser. Yes, tales of the unexpected. Aha. Is it still blooming? What if I do that? We're going to get to the bottom of the skies. I'm determined, determined to get to the bottom of this. See if we can do something about it. Right, there we go. You wouldn't get this on your standard telly channel. You wouldn't get all this fun. Uh, I've been used to listening to you on radio for years, so the visual isn't too important. However, if you want to sort out your camera issue, all you can do for now is move further away so you have a wider picture. Isn't that interesting? Can we do it that way? That helping guys at all if we go into um if we go into a broad move. What if I try the light behind me, no? Or move if I move that way. Is that better, guys? I don't know. It's very difficult to uh, no. No, I don't that no. Then we go misty on the other side, don't we? Play misty for me. It goes all misty on the other side. No, that's not working. Right, we're back. We're back. Hello. Uh, let me see. What if I put this one on again? So if I turn that on, yes, move further away, yeah, and if I put that off and that on, is that helping at all? Is that any better? What do you think, guys? 
Uh, right, you tell me. Uh, but the only thing is, yes, I know, I know what you're saying about the visuals. I mean, the visuals come with the Facebook Live. And I've got a big uh, friend who's, who speaks with one of those voices. He says, well, of course, your appearance, you know, uh, it's your voice you're known for. Your appearance, you know, he obviously doesn't think much of Scotty McClue's appearance. But this is what I look like. So if you don't like it, then, you know, not a problem to me. TV's rubbish. Read a book, says Lisa. President Lisa, I've just finished a wonderful book on Sir Malcolm Sargent, the conductor. What an interesting guy. And he had to put up with so much shit from the BBC at the time. You know, I mean, people thinking they were bigger than him. And he, of course, was the star. And they were desperate to find a chief conductor for their orchestra. And uh, they got Malcolm Sargent. And then they started on him, saying that they were bigger than him and he was to do what they told him. All these faceless suits. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Right, uh, Melissa McAleer, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. I do apologise, guys, for this, uh, this Mr. About Scotty McClue, just for you, saying dinky-doo on Facebook Live. So there we go. But um, we're talking about broadcasting tonight, a lot of it. Sorry I'm late, says Louis Faber. What's the topic tonight? We're talking about global broadcasting, international broadcasting, Louis. And uh, television are losing their audience. Now, I know why they're losing their audience. Because of the content that they're putting out. And I have suggested to television companies, take the Scotty McClue show at night. Because we can all talk to each other and we'll get feedback. Uh, so there you go. Uh, down with the Royals. It's 2017, not 1717. No, we're not down with the Royals, Ian. Don't be silly, right? Do not uh, spoil the ship for a hate worth of tar. Do not hand away our advantages just because you uh, have got politics of envy in your upbringing. Um, there we are. The Royal family are unelected and unaccountable to the people. Well, no, Alan, they're not. Actually, this is Alan Stitt talking. They're not, Alan, because um, if you think about it, the Royal family gave up the uh, absolute monarchy, the right to absolute monarchy, and turned it into constitutional monarchy so that there would be a lot more fairness around and uh, that's why they did it. It's the same with the honour system. The honour system was so that the people became far more involved with their monarchs and with the palace. It united the people and the palace. So that's what was behind the thinking there. I think that's a little bit better, guys, to be quite honest with you. Just wondering what happens if we turn it at a slight angle. Is that better? Uh, right, so that's what we're talking about there. So um, we shall keep that royal family and feed them haggis every day, says John Paul Preston. Absolutely. The royal family are fine. Do not take your eye off the ball because of the roar of the crowd. Take McClure's advice. He knows what he's talking about. I am something of an expert in the monarchy. I can tell you everything that you need to know. And if you go on YouTube, Scotty McClure explains the monarchy. It's grand. We can see you live now. Although the Colin was good too, says Lisa. Yes, absolutely, Lisa. But what we're doing is we're getting a lot more feedback in from the people here. And we are effectively doing television. So that's rather good, I see. But if you guys can get it all out there, and if you can go fund me for a fiver or a tenner or whatever you've got, somebody stuck in a hundred quid, which was wonderful of them, uh, onto uh, gofundme.com, Scotty. Hyphen, forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Uh, the Fire and Govern. Um, oh dear, oh dear. Now, Ian, I'm not going there. Um, all you need is OBS Studio and you can stream to Facebook and YouTube live at the same time, says James Forbes. James, I'm going to look into that because I feel Scotty McClue, now that we're established, should be multi platform. And we should actually be, um, I'm leaning over a bit, by the way, guys, to get away from the bond a bit. Um, so there we are. No, you're wrong. Charles I wanted to raise taxes. Ah, but you don't understand. Charles I, they divided him into a head and a body, and it was a mess. And they were so cowardly. The black mark is still on the clock. That's why you have black mark. Because uh, the black mark is still on the clock in St. James's and Horse Guards. You'll see it during the trooping of the colour, if you watch the trooping of the colour. And it's the focus. 
Come closer. Come closer. So there we are. Camera's perfect. It's the lighting, Scotty. No, I don't think it is, you see. If I come closer... No, you're still getting the mist. Yeah, I'd need to go right up to the camera. You're still getting the mist, guys. Uh, Bruce is 98. No, 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 he's 89. He's 89, and what you've done there is transposed the figures. We have a transposition of figures from you, Ian. Uh, it's the focus. Come closer. Yes. No, no, no. Gary Hussein's watching. Dinky do, Gary. Boo, says Lisa Preston. Yes, says Julianne Scott. That's better, says Angie Thompson. There we are. I'll go over to that side. See if that's a little bit better. Looks as if I've got a red eye when I do that. Uh, so I'll put a light out. You see, I put that one out. I think that was maybe causing a problem. Let me see if I bring the light closer up, if it helps. No, no, that's not helping at all. No, that's not helping at all, guys. Anyway, there we go. Uh, you're still a lovely man, says Fiona Reardon. Thank you very much, Fiona. Very much appreciated. And um, love the show, Scotty, but you're not reaching your target audience. Facebook only allows you a certain amount of friends. You need a booster. You're showing 46 viewers. The boxing last night at 150k viewers. Yes, but, and I'm used to maybe quarter of a million per half hour on, uh, on live terrestrial radio or television. But what I will say is 125, over 125,000 of you. Although it's showing 46 at the moment, last week's, the total's well over 5,000 uh, viewers from last week so already on a facebook live video as you so rightly point out it is only one platform and already we've reached over 125,000 people and already i mean one of the one of the programs is an audience of 10,000 so that's pretty good so you're getting 10,000 an audience now if we can get that up to 100,000 which we can quite easily then we have a show guys we have input, so fantastic stuff. You're quite right, Dan. And um, what do you think will be the fallout from the threats made at the Tory party conference? I don't think many people will uh, pay any attention to that because the Tories are so minuscule in Scotland that really, in fact, I don't know why we have unionist parties in a Scottish parliament because it's a Scottish parliament. So it would be people that are for Scotland. And if, if Labour ever wanted to come out of the wilderness, then they need to back Scottish independence. I mean, that's been true to their roots. It's an independent Scotland that Keir Hardy wanted all these years ago. And then the founder of the, um, well, he was the founder of the Labour Party, but the founder of the SNP had uh, just moved over from Labour. So you had all these people as well. Uh, fantastic. Uh, R.B. Cunningham Graham. Uh, receiving you in Tukatumshi in the Philippines, Scotty. Fantastic. Yes, of course, Ian. No problem at all. Uh, some of the television shows are two million years old, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. Fantastic. Guys, can we do a sharing? Share, 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 share. McClure, the lights went out. Can we please have a landscape view of Tobermory? Rather than your ugly past, Scott and Sterling, I think what's happened is you have been looking in the mirror. Now, your missus told me that the mirrors had been taken out your house to avoid sudden shock. Uh, Beth Taylor says, can you ask unionists why they're afraid of independence? Yes, the people who are going on about independence all the time are the unionists. I can tell you why they're afraid of independence. Because they're afraid of uh, London not being able to have the lifestyle it's grown accustomed to if £40 billion is spent home here in Scotland. So in other words, if we take the oil and the whiskey and all the commerce, and if you're a business in Scotland, you should account in Scotland, and we spend it feeding our children and doing up our housing, and, um, you know, giving people a standard of living, getting the Clyde working again, making places like Greenock the financial capital of the world, developing our airports and our motorways and our communications, building up the tourist industry. I mean, you take a little island like Pabby off the Sound of Harris, uninhabited. It used to have 300 people on it and three villages. What about that? So the unionists are, are afraid of losing the dosh Strip out all the talk altogether. Follow the money. 
Scotty McClue is not even a political animal. Scotty McClue is an economist, right? A banker to trade with a B. All right, a banker to trade. That's my profession to trade, as I say. My trade or my profession is banking and finance. I am an economist. And what I would say is that um, the economy in Scotland is so buoyant and so healthy. And the reason we can't splash money around is because Westminster take all the money and give us back our pocket money. And that's why they're telling you we're better together. Just a lot of bunkum. So ignore all this chat about the SNP being obsessed with independence or what have you. Thank goodness somebody is, because economically, Scotland would do very, very well on its Todd as an international trading partner with the rest of the world and also as a member of the single market. Because Scotland was in the single market effectively in the 13 and 1400s. So our track record with trading with Europe goes back six, seven hundred years. And with a wonderful navy, James IV had the great Michael, one of the biggest wooden flagships. They say he destroyed most of the old forests of Caledonia to build the great Michael for the Scottish Navy. So remember that Scotland has been independent for 1707 years. And it's only not been independent for 310 years. All right, very important. Give us a shout out. We Chris Free Devon. Chris is down in Devon. Chris Aitchison, Dinky Doo. I love Devon. I love my clotted cream. I love England. I love Britain. I love Wales. I love Ireland. North and South. I love the whole lot. Um, but Scotland needs to have its own administration. So it's really just a change of management and a change of um, distribution of DOSH. So anything you hear them saying, always keep your eye on the money and say it's actually about the money. They don't want to lose £40 billion a year. Well, why should they? You know, you can understand it. Uh, so there we are. And all that money spent would feed our children. <coughs> Is it because on BBC we have to pay a TV license? Well, the BBC makes £325 million a year out of us in Scotland. So there you are. Richard is watching. And uh, dinky-doo to you. Scotty, why did they use the wee lassie on the box when the programme finished back in the day? That was the test card. That lady uh, appeared on a television program in adulthood, the wee lady. And they used to also have a clown on the test card. And what the test card was doing, if you see the camera bomb that Scotty McClure is suffering from tonight, that mistiness, um, what they would do was train the cameras on the greys of the test card. The, te the early test card was grey in colour, and they would train the camera on that and leave it trained on that until... It sort of thought, ah, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, has Mrs. McClure been Skyping the neighbours? Says Angie. <laughs> Jane McDonald's watching. Dinky-doo, Jane McDonald, a very fine lady. Highly intelligent lady. Marvellous. And uh, Phil Jones Hammersley, get a hairdryer on it, he says. Yes, it's not, it's not missed, Phil. I have to tell you, Scotty, I personally think you need to bring back the phone-in vibe. Even if you're using a cell phone says Lisa Preston. We might actually do that, Lisa. We might do that. We need to get a profanity device in because we had a couple of young lads uh, swore. And, uh, you know, although we could cope with a swear word, I'm not coping with them being uh, abusive and stuff like that because we're guests in people's houses. There's no need. If you watch Scotty McClure's comedy acts over the last 40 years, you'll never hear me using swear words or anything like that. Uh, you're on your side now, says Stephen Kelly. Yes, I know, Stephen. Absolutely. McClure Mansions, says James Forbes. I'm going to move this away. I'm just wondering if that will help, if we can do something about that. Um, how's that, guys? Is that a wee bit better? If I move like that. Ah, there you are. So it's that part of the camera. I can actually see it. I can see where the bond is, guys. I can see it forming. Uh, so there we are. You're on your side now in McClue Mansions. Absolutely. Uh, your video is sideways now. Yes. This has to be a YouTube viral classic. Absolutely, Edward James. Get it up there. I shall be getting it up 
A blind man wouldn't notice it, says George Raffin. Perhaps not. Uh, just, he says, a, he says a swear word, just blooming forget the lens thing, says Stephen Kelly. All right, Stephen, I'll blooming forget it and we'll get on with the show. Now, we're on to our other subjects, but we're very, very tight for time. Um, should America come back to Britain? We talk about the special relationship. And there's a lot of people saying that Donald Trump will be the last president of America. So should America actually come back to Britain? Britain ran America until 1776. Glasgow ran the tobacco trade. And I know in those days, a lot of these trades, a lot of the big cities in this country were built off the back of slavery. So we are no way advocating a return to that. But should Britain um, take over America and uh, Donald Trump be the last president? We'll need to uh, discuss that one next week. That is a biggie, folks, I shall tell you. Now, you need to do me a massive favour, and you really do need to do it. So don't be going, ah, I'm no bothering with him. Ah, forget Scotty McClue. Not at all. This is a global programme. We are worldwide, and uh, we do want to improve the facilities as we say. So I would like you to go fund me. So please go and stick a fiver into www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. If you'd rather stick something into PayPal, go on to www.scotty hyphen McClue.com, the Scotty McClue website where there are 10 million people will have joined you there and uh, stick something in via PayPal. That would be excellent. Bring back the Collins, says Lisa. Uh, just tilt the camera higher and the blur will be on your hat. Ah, good thinking. Yes, well done, Batman. Now put that light back on. Will that help him? Now, again, we've got lighting problems there, haven't we, guys? If we do that anyway we've, we've to forget it we've been told to forget that right uh fantastic stuff 250 comments tonight it's like a lighthouse scotty says steve burrows it's the reflection of the wee pic behind you uh the lights burning the camera excellent thank you very much for that and you will sort that out the show tonight is brilliant it's all about the camera blur stick it on youtube to teach others Scotty, you won't get the dyslexic people on your show. And that's 10% of the population. We need a phone in. I know. Absolutely. We will sort that. I'm looking into it. But you need to fund me. I need to buy the bits and pieces. And I can't afford to do that. So I need all of you to get on to go fund me. If everybody gives a fiver, we'll make our target. Right? So if one million of you sticks a fiver in there then you will see a massive difference and we will get a world-class program that everybody loves and if there's anything you want to change about the program you can decide because it's the people's program it's the people's show so you need to do me a massive favor you need to share and share and share and share this right across social media everything that you've got out there Go on your Periscope, go on your Twitter, go on your Facebook, go on your YouTube, go on your LinkedIn and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live at 10 each Sunday night. Now, I think we're out of time, guys, so I'm going to push off. It's been fantastic being with you tonight. Have a lovely, lovely, lovely week and please keep sharing. Vivian Scotson's on. Hi, Scotty. Well done to the high bees. Go on, says Chris Hutchison. No problem at all. Lynn Kay says, Scotty, you're a comic genius with your lighting issues. I'll never forget the day I read a book. It was contagious. 70 pages there were. Pictures here and there. And it wasn't hard to bear the day I read a book, says Ian Walker. Well, I, w I took up gymnastics for anger management once, and on the first night, I flipped. Uh, right, Edward James has come back to tell us something. Our media company's too big to engage with their audience, unlike what you do. I think they are, Alan Cadden. I think the media companies have become so uh, full of dosh and so greedy, they have lost contact with their audience which is why their audiences are deserting them so they've got a choice they can either get scotty mcclue on there to engage with their audiences again or they can go down the swanee it's up to them 
I can only take the horses to the water. I cannot make them drink. That's it, folks. We're out of time. Dinky-doo to all of you. It's been lovely being with you. Sorry about the camera bomb. There we are. It's caused a wee bit of a stushy tonight, but we all sort it out. We may even get some expert advice coming in during the week to see what it's all about. A friend of mine was telling me tonight that it's also possible to broadcast live on Periscope and uh, on Facebook Live at the same time. So who knows what the future brings. All I can say is the future is very, very bright. But get your paper money out and get it into GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. Please don't turn politely away. If you don't have any money at all, click on the link and share and share and share until you're blue in the pus. All right. That's it from me, Scotty McClue. To all of you, good night, God bless, dinky-doo, and ta da -las. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Au revoir, au revoir, and a cheerio. Cheerio, lads. Dinky-doo. Scotty McClue has left the building.